Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel and in today's video, I'll be sharing all my last mini tips on how to get that A plus for your chemistry paper in SPM. So I checked the timetable and chemistry is actually the last subject for a science stream student and I remember that in my year, chemistry was my last paper as well. So you just have to make it through this paper and then you're free for a very long time. Okay, now let's get right into my first tip, which is to pay attention to certain terminologies when it comes to answering paper two and paper three. And what I mean by this is, for example, when it comes to rate of reaction, you can only write that the rate of reaction is higher or lower. It is not faster or slower. These are the things which will um, make you lose marks. So do pay attention to this. And I, another example is the purple color disappear. That is actually wrong. You're going to write purple color decolorizes, not disappear. And another one is that instead of writing H plus increase, you should write the concentration of H plus increases. So these are the little things that you need to take note of. Number two is to know how to balance chemical equations. And I hope that you know how to do this by now. Chemical equations are definitely a huge part of chemistry. It is a very important part. And most people struggle with chemistry because they can't write or balance chemical equations. And I have made a 16 minute video on how to write and balance chemical equations. And I have listed down all the possible chemical reactions like when acid is added to base, you get salt and water. If acid is added to another thing, you get something else. I have covered all that in that video so you can go watch that if you want to. I'll leave a link in the description box below. But Chemical equations are really such a huge part of chemistry and I hope that you are clear with it by now. But if not, then use some time to go through and learn from whichever source you find is the best. Number three is when writing observations, make sure that you go from initial to final always. So I have two examples to explain this and the first one is for litmus paper. So for a litmus paper, instead of writing that moist litmus paper turns red, you're going to write moist litmus paper turns from blue to red. Or you can write blue moist litmus paper turns red. Either that or that, but you have to make sure that you mention from what to what. Another example that I have for you is acidified potassium permanganate 7. Instead of writing that, this solution turns colorless, you have to write that acidified potassium permanganate 7 turns from purple to colorless. Um, these are the things that you need to take note of when writing observations in order to get full marks for observation. Before, I'm just going to talk a little bit about experiments and in chemistry, there are a lot of experiments that you have to memorize and unlike biology, where not knowing experiments will maybe um, let you lose around 6 marks in paper 3. Um, experiments in chemistry are actually different because they will be tested in paper 2 as well as in paper 3. So the chemistry experiments are all really important. And the way that I memorize um, chemistry experiments is I would memorize the diagrams first. So from the diagram, I can visualize how to do this experiment well how to do this experiment properly and I can know the first step to the last step from the diagram itself. So now you can prepare a little something called like the experiment plans instead of essay plans, these are experiment plans. So what you can do is you can write down the name of the experiment like rate of reaction and you can draw out the experiment. You don't need to write out all the steps because there might not be time for that. Instead of doing that, you can just write down the title of the experiment and draw the diagram and then write down the other title and draw the diagram. Do this for all the experiments in Form 4 and Form 5, all the experiments in the syllabus. And you will have a complete list and then you can just read through that list. But so when you read through that list, you have to make sure that you know how to draw the diagram when given a certain experiment. And you have to make sure that you know how to write the procedure based on the diagram as well. So it would have helped if you have participated in actively in the experiments that you did in school. So you would have an idea of how the experiment is carried out and stuff. But when you're drawing itself, 
you have to visualize the steps as you are preparing your experiment plans you have to visualize the steps and then you're going to revise the plan again and again like this is one way to cover the experiments in form 4 and form 5. Number 5 is to know your basics and I do have a list of 28 basic concepts that you need to know for chemistry. If you have watched my videos for a while, you would know about the existence of that video. But basically, I picked out all the important little little things from Form 4 and Form 5 and compiled it into a video links in the description box below as usual. And I just think that it works as a quick revision um, so that you do know the core of all these things and I do mention some of the important definitions in that video as well so you might want to watch that video to refresh your memory but basically the basic concepts of chemistry are really really important Number 6 is to memorize what you need to memorize I think you will know by now that chemistry is not actually a memorizing subject it's more about understanding each and every single topic I didn't include that as one of the tips in this video because it's too late, it's a few days from SPM, right? So if you don't understand every single topic, then you can maybe go through the basic concepts of chemistry just so you know roughly what chemistry is all about. But okay, so there are certain things that you need to memorize in chemistry and that is the electrochemical series. Super important, I'm sure that a lot of you guys have acronyms for it by now. Um, I'm sure that your teacher has given you acronyms by now and that is one of the things that you have to memorize and you have to memorize the name of processes as well. And one more is the color of salt in chemistry. There are also several definitions that are very important for chemistry which you need to know and I have found um, some list of definitions for from 4 and from 5 and I'll leave links to that website in the description box below. There are some more important definitions that you need to take note of. If you can't memorize the entire list of definitions, then you should at least make sure that you know the definitions of these few ones. And these are isotope, empirical formula, effective collision, redox reaction, displacement, and rate of reaction. So these are the few definitions that you should take note of. I'll leave um, these definitions uh, in the description box also so you can screenshot that. When you are memorizing definitions, I think that there are certain key points that you need to take note of, certain key words that will contribute much to that definition because as we all know, not the entire definition is important. There are some words that are interchangeable and can be replaced by other words, but then there are some key words that have to be there in order for marks to be awarded. So for example, for the definition of rate of reaction, um, we have the keyword here, we have two keywords here and it is that the particles must collide with the correct orientation and that the particles achieve activation energy. So these are the two keywords for the definition of rate of reaction. So there are certain keywords like that which you really need to take note of because even if you don't write the other parts, as long as you write these two things, you will be awarded marks for it. So do take note of certain keywords for definitions. Number seven is about k -bat. And what I want to say about k -bat is thankfully for chemistry, not many k -bat questions will be asked, at least for my year. Um, I had a lot of k -bat questions for biology paper. There were around six questions of k -bat. And then for modern mathematics, there were a lot of k -bat as well. But for chemistry, I don't remember any k -bat questions being asked for my year. So do not worry too much about KBAT, but if KBAT does come out, just make sure that you do all the other questions well. Just do everything that is um, that makes sense, basically. All the other questions that make sense, do those first. And then leave the KBAT questions last. And basically, what I want to say about KBAT is what I said for biology paper as well, which is that I think every other person is as clueless as you are when it comes to answering k -bat questions. So what differentiates you and the other person is not whether you can answer that k -bat question or not, it's whether you can answer those questions which are from the syllabus or not. And then both of you are just screwed for k -bat, but that's okay. The thing that differentiates you between the next person and how your grades should be is whether or not you can answer those questions which are actually 
started from the syllabus. So that is why do not worry about K but just focus on knowing the stuff that is from the reference books and textbooks. Anyways, those are the seven tips that I have for your chemistry SPM paper and I wish you all the best for your last paper. This is nearing towards the end of the journey. Once you finish this paper, freedom is yours. All the best. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.